So in the previous lecture, I talked about how the spectrophotometer works and how we actually get the absorbance and the transmittance. But there's a problem. So in the lab, you have a test tube okay, for any of your concentrations or any of your protein solutions. You have a test tube. And inside this test tube, you've got several different components. First and foremost, you start with a protein solution, which means it's going to be partially protein and partially water. Okay? So in this test tube, I know that I've got protein, and that protein is mixed with water. But I add one other thing to this. And you added one more solution, and that solution was biuret. Okay, it turned it purple. Okay, and then you take this whole mixture, obviously it doesn't exist in these layers, it just mixes completely into a solution that's partially biuret, partially water, and partially protein. You put it into your spectrophotometer and it gives you an absorbance and a transmittance. So you place this in your spectrophotometer and it gives you some absorbance and some percent transmittance. Okay, so this is the output. Some absorbance, some transmittance. Now let me ask you a question. How do I know that the absorbance I'm getting, that is the amount of light that was absorbed by this sample, and the percent transmittance, the amount of light that was not absorbed by this sample, how do I know that that's only due to the ability of the protein to absorb light or not absorb light? Okay? So I only want to know how well this protein does or doesn't absorb light. But I've got several other things in here. First off, I've got water and biuret mixed in with my protein. And then I've also got the glass of this test tube that's going to act to reflect some of the light. So the problem is, I don't know, right now at least, if the values I'm getting for absorbance and transmittance are only due to protein or if they also were affected by the presence of water, biuret, and the glass of the test tube. So if you think back to the digital balance from metric, and when we used the wave vote with that coin, we had to first zero out the balance. Okay, we had to tear it. What we did when we teared the balance was we placed the wave vote on the balance, we close the lid and we press tear. And what that does is it takes the mass of that wave boat and negates it, which means the balance no longer takes into effect the mass of that wave boat. It sets the mass of that wave boat to zero. Whatever is on the balance at that time is set to zero. We're going to use a similar concept in this lab. What we need to do is we need to compose a test tube that contains everything except the particular component that we want to measure. So we want to know the absorbance and transmittance spectrum for the protein in our experiment. So what we need to do is we need to find a way to negate these other three things. So what we're going to create is we're going to create a test tube that's called the blank. The blank is going to contain everything except the one substance that you're interested in. Okay? So I'm going to create a test tube that has in it water and biuret, but no protein. Okay? So biuret and water, but no protein. So notice the difference between my sample tube and my blank tube. And please recall also and remember that I'm drawing lines to show that there's both biuret and water in here, but they don't actually separate like this. They're going to mix in and my solution is going to be uniform blue from the mixture of the biuret and the water. And so I have this blank. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this blank into my spectrophotometer. So I'm going to place it in the spec. whatever wavelength it is I want to measure my sample at. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my 100% transmittance knob 
until the blank equals 100% T. Okay? So I'm going to turn my percent transmittance knob up until my blank registers at 100% transmittance. Now let's think about what this means. 100% transmittance means if I have my light bulb in my spectrophotometer and my light passing through, my blank sample, okay, so here's my sample. Now this blank is going to absorb some light. So some light is going to be absorbed and the rest of the light is going to be transmitted to that meter okay, that measures it. But when we set the percent transmittance to 100%, what we're effectively saying is this amount of light that is transmitted when a light passes through our blank sample, we're setting that to 100% transmittance, which means the absorbance if the transmittance is 100%, the absorbance should be zero. So we're effectively tearing our blank sample, just like what we did with the wave boat. We're now saying, whatever effect these components have on our original beam of light, we're now negating. And this amount of light that is passing through it is now our new zero absorbance, 100% transmittance. So we're basically saying, whatever effect these three components, the test tube, the biorette, and the water have on our beam of light, we're negating that effect, and this amount that passes through is now our new 100% amount of light that's, that's going to be transmitted. In other words, when we add our protein to the mix, it should then effectively change the amount of light that is absorbed from our initial beam and the amount of light that transmits or is transmitted by the sample. So what we've effectively done now is we've removed these elements from our final value that we'll obtain for this particular sample. So when we get our absorbance and our percent transmittance of this sample, we know that these directly correlate to the protein in the sample, not the water, not the biuret, and not the test tube, because we have negated those factors when we calibrate the spectrophotometer to 100% transmittance and an absorbance of zero while the blank is inside. As long as we stay at the same wavelength, this basically tells us that the absorbance and the percent transmittance we receive for this sample is due to the protein in the sample, not the water, not the biuret, and not the test tube. Okay. So this is why we first had to put a blank into our spectrophotometer, so that we then would know that whatever absorbance and whatever percent transmittance we're getting directly correlates to the presence of that protein in our experimental sample.